What's up folks, Perry the Water Legend here today with my first ever top 10 video. Now that E3 has all wrapped up and is about to just conclude and everyone's in the aftershock of all the announcements and the press conferences, I think it's time that I give myself an excuse to talk about some of the games and some of the stuff that was announced during the course of E3. Keep in mind a couple of things with regards to this top 10 list. One, this is just my personal opinion. These are games that have me very intrigued based on reasons of whether I'm a fan of the franchise, whether I am a pre fan of the studio's previous work, how much do I know about this game, how much do I not know about this game, and I, there are some games on here on this list that I know, know some people are going to say, why the hell is this even on the list? Again, this is just my personal opinion. You have your list, and that's fine. I will respect yours as long as you respect mine. Also, there's going to be some games on here that was like, a lot of people are going to say, why is this not even in here? Well, simply put, there's not enough slots. I would love to talk about this game. That doesn't mean I'm not excited for it. It's just I need to I need time to consider all my options. And this is just as of now, as of this recording, this is what I'm personally thinking. So without further ado, let's jump right into my top ten list of E3 2014 games, announcements, prizes. Oh screw it. Let's just call it things. E3 2014 things. Number 10, Dreadnought. So why exactly am I so excited for Dreadnought? Well, the first thing is that it's free to play, and hey, who doesn't love free stuff? The second reason, and most important reason as to why I'm excited for this game is that it's being developed by Jaeger Development, a German video game studio whose most previous work, or most established work, is known as Spec Ops The Line. Okay, let's take that into consideration, folks. A free-to-play game centered around space battle cruisers, duking it out massive sizes that look like this. And it's being developed by the same creators of Spec Ops The Line. If this doesn't color me interested, I don't know what does. Number 9. Final Fantasy Type-0 gets an HD remastering on PS4 and Xbox One. Now, for several years, I wanted Type-0 to come to the States, formerly known as a Gato 13, as well as Final Fantasy 15 to come to the States. Hell, I've been waiting for that game since high school, formerly known as Versus 13. However, this game, being Japanese only and being on the PSP since, I believe, 2008, I didn't think this would ever get a stateside release, even though it is a Final Fantasy game and it was developed in conjunction with the 13 universe. However, with this HD remastering for the PS4 and Xbox One, I'm very excited to finally get my hands on this game. And for those of you who want this game on the PS Vita, there's a link down in the description below for those who want to see this stateside as well. Number 8 Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, if you saw my original review for this game, you know I am a huge fan of the Tomb Raider reboot. I thought it was a fantastic return to form for Lara Croft. It was one of the most seamless gameplay experiences I've ever seen in recent memory. And the fact is that this sequel seems to be going in a much more, I would almost say, traumatic route in terms of the fact that Lara Croft in the fact that Lara Croft is now trying to overcome her own traumatic experiences at Yamatai and trying to overcome her own sense of having to become this ruthless killer and a survivor in her own sense. And the fact of the matter is, is that now we're actually probably going to get a chance to raid some tombs. Now, while there was worse side missions in the original game, the fact that they will most likely be the main focus of this game makes me very, very curious, as well as the emotional development of Lara Croft as a character. I, again, I couldn't be more excited about this game. I'm happy the fact that we're getting a sequel to it. I think the first one did phenomenally well. Granted, some expectations from Square are a little bit too high, but either way, it's nice to have Lara Croft back. Number 7 Assassin's Creed Unity now, any who know me knows that my history major makes no surprise as to why this would be on my list. I'm a huge history fan. I love looking at the ancient past and seeing what stories can be told from it, as well as historical fiction. And Assassin's Creed has been that perfect dream for me, as well as being able to go into historical time periods that I will never personally get to see, but a chance to live through those time periods and see what it was like in some shape or form. Granted, I know it's not historically accurate, but this isn't meant for historical accuracy. And the French Revolution, which is 
this game takes place around is one of those time periods that I've always wanted to see. Granted, I'm more on fans of ancient history, closer to the time period of the Third Crusade. However, the fact that we also had the Italian Renaissance, one of my favorite time periods, and this and this one coming into the French Revolution, I can't wait to see what historical figures, set pieces, and all those things take place during the course of Assassin's Creed Unity. And plus, a four-player co-op campaign where you get to play with your friends as assassins together in Paris? I mean, what's not to love? Number 6 no Man's Sky. Every once in a while, there comes across a game that just redefines the term ambitious. And to me, No Man's Sky has my full respect in terms of how ambitious this game is. I mean, every time I look at this game, it always reminds me of just what can a small team do together. And to think that all of this, everything that you see here, all these worlds, all these ships, all of it was just developed by less than five people. It almost blows my no actually no it doesn't almost blow my mind it completely blows my mind i mean look how seamless this demo is going from the outer space to the lower surface of a planet all the way back up into space every time i see this game i am absolutely bewildered at how beautiful how vast and how just ambitious this game is that is just the one word i would have to say is ambitious and every time i want to see this game i want to see more and more of it all of it's randomly generated and the endless possibilities that proceed through this game. I absolutely adore everything about No Man's Sky and I wait and I can't wait to see more of it in the future. Number 5 Bayonetta 2 and Bayonetta 1 get one complete package on Wii U. The reason why this one is on my list is because of a total reversal of opinion. The fact that they now included the first game along with the second game has now completely alleviated my concerns as to why this game should not be on this list or why this game should be not on the Wii U in the first place. Now that Nintendo has been smart enough to include the first game, I actually am glad the fact that Bayonetta 2 is now going to be on the Wii U because of the fact that nobody will left me out in the cold. Everyone will know the exact same story and not be left out of a chapter and Wii U fans will not feel like they are missing something when the fact they pick up this game as well as old fans like myself who have enjoyed Bayonetta since the beginning can actually play this game again through open eyes and see what Nintendo can actually do when they stretch their wings and publish a game like this. Number 4 The Legend of Zelda Wii U Trailer now, I'm going to be straightforward and honest with you people. I have never played a Legend of Zelda game in my life, and the fact of the matter that this is so high on my list, it should tell you something that my curiosity and my interest is incredibly peaked. This art style alone makes me very curious about the game. The fact that it's also open world makes me very curious. So if The Legend of Zelda managed to live up to its promises, then maybe I can finally understand as to why people are so crazy about The Legend of Zelda series to begin with, and I hopefully will be the start of a beautiful new franchise for me to get into. Number 3 Abzu now this is one game I feel like I'm going to get a lot of criticism as to why I have this on my list at all, but I need to be perfectly honest with you people. I freaking loved Journey. I absolutely adored everything about the game, and the reason why I'm so excited for this game is because of that. Knowing that this game has ex-development staff from Journey working on this game at Giant Squid, and there is another big factor as to why I'm excited for this is the composer Austin Wintory from Journey is returning for this game. Now I know some people are going to criticize this and call this Journey Under the Sea edition and this is probably the most personal out of all the things on my list as to why I'm putting it on the list. But I can't help but deny it. the art style looks gorgeous. I can't wait to hear Austin Wintory score again because I feel like this game has a lot of potential. Number 2 Batman Arkham Knight showcasing one damn sexy Batmobile. I know this may sound like a bold statement, but I feel like in the case of Rocksteady's Batman Arkham games, I feel like this could be made true. They've actually redefined in terms of the possibility of a good superhero game, not just being a good superhero game in general, but just be a great game. I mean, Arkham Asylum was a fantastic foundation for what could have been a great game. Arkham City expanded upon that. It is a fantastic game in its own right. Arkham Origins may some people feel like it is a step down, but the fact that it is developed by a different studio, I don't blame them for it because they're not as familiar with the material. However, the fact that Arkham City and Arkham 
Asylum, and now finally Arkham Knight, it, the Rocksteady's final Batman game. This is going to be a fantastic closure to the series. I can't wait to see Kevin Conroy return as Batman to see who exactly is this Arkham Knight figure, all these villains, everything about this series. It looks fantastic. I can't wait to try the Batmobile. It looks really awesome, and the fact that it even turns into a hovering bat tank. I just, all this game, everything about it, I cannot wait to see the final conclusion to Batman Arkham series. Number 1 Uncharted 4 A Thief's End this is pretty much on the same reason as Batman Arkham Knight as to why it's on this list, is closure. This feels like the final Uncharted game. This feels like the end of a franchise. And you know what? It's been one hell of a good run. From, un from Drake's Fortune to Among Thieves to Drake's Deception, everything about this trailer feels like it is about to wrap up a really damn good adventure franchise. While I admit, if this is the final Uncharted game, I will miss Nathan Drake, the fact that he's been such a great adventure character to go on these rides with, from El Dorado to Shangri-La to the, to the Aram of the Pillars. Everything about this trailer just feels so somber, like actual characters are going to die. With Neil Druckmann at the helm, director of The Last of Us, I feel like this is in good hands, even after the departure of Amy Henning. And you know what, to Drake, I say this. You've been a great character and a really fun game series to go through. I hope that Naughty Dog gives you the proper swan song that you deserve. And like your ring says, greatness from small beginnings. And you know what? You have achieved greatness, my friend. So, if this is the final game in your series, I'll have to say this. So long, Drake, and take care. <laughs>